gonna go big with this? Whoa, <laughs> man. I think that's one of the things that's really nice. Mr. Nobuhiko Takada, Hoist Gracie, Ensign Inoue, Mark Kerr, Alexander Otsuka, Igor Volkchanson, Masaki Satake, Tortikari. Big Daddy, Gary Goodrich. Daddy Goodrich. Mr. Akira Soji. Ebenezer Fontes Braga from Brazil. Kazayuki Ujita. Hans Naiman. Mr. Kazushi Sakuraba. Guy Mesger. Masaki Satake. Mark Coleman. Alexander Otsuka. Igor Volchenshin. Ensign Inoue. Mark Kerr. Nobuhiko Takada. Voice Gracie. I think one of the great things and big differences between Pride and the other Noho Guard and fighting events around the world is the pageantry. This kind of display, they really treat the fighters here like rock stars, like celebrities. Well, these, you know, these guys have all trained real hard and it takes a lot to get to where these guys are at right now. And to be appreciated like this really, really uh, makes you feel good, makes you want to come out and perform. I think that with the astronomical amounts of money that they could make if they go to the finals in May, it's just, it's their finest hour. Yeah, well, uh, this makes you feel like all the hard work that you put through, you know, to get to this point, and you come out and these people appreciate it, you get this kind of uh, a respect and the kind of money that they put into this production, you feel like you, you belong and you're important here. There's Mr. Fujita and Hoist Gracie making his way into the ring with the other gentlemen. There's Mr. Sakuraba, considered by many, Mr. Takata. Mr. Satake. There's an incredible diversity, boss, in the styles of many of these fighters. You've got stand-up fighters, you've got submission fighters, you've got wrestlers. That's what's going to make it the very interesting. I mean, the striking against the strikes, that's what the audience want to see, you know, because that's always fireworks. 
But I think the mix up and the lineups and everything is perfect. I think it's going to be a, a, a boss. This gets you pumped up, makes you want to be in it with these guys. In the Man, line. right away, look at this. You can burn yourself on a play I mean, like that. These guys really, really got an opportunity here. Oh, yeah. There's nothing quite like a pride fighter parade to get me shadow boxing here in the UFC Fight Pass studio. I'm TJ DeSantis, and if you are watching right now, you can tell I can't really throw a punch to save my life, but that's okay. I'm really good at watching fights, and today we're going to watch fights together as we are uh, in the midst of Pride Never Die Month here on UFC Fight Pass. Each and every April, we uh, turn our attention to one of the greatest and most influential promotions in mixed martial arts history, Pride FC in Japan. It became what it was. Uh, based on many fighters, but one in particular, a former UFC heavyweight champion, Mark the Hammer Coleman, he kind of built pride in the early days, and uh, it was sort of um, a, a result that not many people saw coming. Uh, Coleman lost his last three fights in his original UFC run. One was to Pedro Hizo, in which I didn't think he really lost, but uh, I digress. Uh, he had lost four of his last five coming into this pride uh, open weight Grand Prix back in 2000. He's, uh, you know, just not the same Mark Coleman that we saw be the innovator of ground and pound in the early days of the UFC. And, you know, I don't want to say that he was necessarily an underdog in this tournament, but he definitely wasn't a favorite. Now, an underdog was the man standing in front of him on the opening round uh, night in Japan. We got a guy named Masaaki Sataki, who's a karate master, has some wrestling as well, but definitely not the same kind of wrestling as uh, Mark Coleman. It was pro wrestling, not really the kind of wrestling you want against a standout from Ohio State in Mark Coleman. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Can Masaaki Sataki pull off the upset, or does Mark the Hammer Coleman get back in the swing of things? Let's find out as we watch some of the best swings from the hammer. Get that swing, hammer? Best hits from the hammer? All right, I digress. Uh, let's get into it. It is Mark Coleman versus Masaaki Sataki here on UFC Fight Pass. And there we go. Getting ready for the big shoot now. Coleman will shoot. He's not going to want to stand up with Sataki. Uh-uh. Both fighters very relaxed. Sataki looks like he's a little bit... Uh, a little nervous. A little nervous, a little tense. The feeling out here. I feel each other out. There's quite a bit of difference between training up in Seattle and getting in the ring with Mark Coleman, <laughs> as you know. Yeah, it's a lot of difference. But uh, he's got some good, strong coaches behind him. Um, uh, the Kosaka and um, Maurice Smith, the, the good, positive guys behind him. Coleman so knows see. he go, goes for that double leg. Sataki tries to sprawl, and there it goes. Yeah. Coleman with a sit, double leg takedown. Right into Sataki's guard. Going for that neck crank. Sataki trying to push his way out. Sataki could be in some trouble here, although I believe that he must have been coached by Maurice in the same attack. It looks very similar to when Coleman fought Maurice. Oh, yeah. He's got Coleman. a weather big storm right here. Coleman trying for that neck crank. Sataki tapping out on a straight neck crank. I uh, guess he wasn't used to that. Like I said before, there's a difference between training up there with neck cranks and then getting into the ring with one of the strongest competitors in the Pride Grand Prix 2000, Mark Coleman, getting a big victory, a very quick victory. Congratulating Kosaka. There they are, the two former nemesis, Mark Coleman. Beautiful fight. Congratulations, Mark Coleman. But uh, you still got to give Kasaki, you still got to give Sataki um, hats off for getting in the ring. His yeah, first NHB match against a man that's uh, a proven man. Yeah, uh, Sataki, you know, he had the uh, courage to get in there against a guy of the stature of Mark Coleman. And here it is. Coleman is just waiting for that shooting opportunity. Takes the double leg takedown. Coleman, a former Olympic wrestler, very hard to stay on your feet with that man. Goes to the neck crank immediately. Sataki pushes his way out at first, but then Coleman 
just grinds away, a couple punches to soften Satake up. In order to get out of that, you need to drop your guard and, and push your butt back. This releases the pressure, but uh, an inexperienced person don't know this. And he goes for that neck rank, yep. and he gets the tap out at 1 minute and 14 seconds. Satake in some pain there from the neck crank. Here's another angle. Coleman stalking his prey, going for the double leg. Pulling double. Very Satake nice on his back. Beautiful. One minute and 14 seconds, neck crank. Well, Coleman obviously is glad that this is over quickly. And he's obviously going to be looking forward to entering for that $200,000 cash grand prize. And there's the neck crank, and there's the tap right there by Satake. Coleman's paid his dues, and he's back in the winner's circle again. There he is at ringside. A huge victory for Mark the Hammer Coleman. Coleman. Yes. The dream team. Good work, Mark. Hammer side. Very good victory. Coleman looks like he's ready to go for another one. A great win for Mark Coleman. I don't know if I'd want to get slapped five by that man right now. That's a lot of power coming <laughs> out of it. But you know something about power, Gary. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Coleman's a little pumped up now. The adrenaline's going, so He's uh, slapping a lot harder than he wants to, you know? Now, there is a possibility that you may face him again at some point. What? Oh, good. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Anyway, as we were saying, there's a chance that you may have a rematch with yeah. Mr. Coleman. I'm looking forward to the rematch. I would like more, nothing more than to beat him a little bit more. <laughs> you know, uh, Coleman and I got some unfinished business. I mean, we're friends and everything, but in the ring, we're different, you know? He's different here. He's trying to, see, he, there he goes trying to mimic me. See that? See that there? Yeah, I like that. See, Gary, one of the things that makes you a very popular fighter in Japan is that sensational winning personality that you have. Well, you know, you got to do it like it is. And you got to say it like it is, you know, because I don't back down for nobody, you know? Well, there you go. One down, three to go for the hammer. Mark Coleman as he gets his first win of the Pride 2000 Grand Prix. Uh, you can open a can of whoop-ass, but you can't do it unless you got a can opener. And that's exactly what Mark Coleman did. Uh, pulled off the can opener, neck crank submission over Masaaki Sataki. And uh, can opener, not really a position or a move that you're going to do uh, to win a fight these days. It kind of just opens up the guard. In fact, it's banned in most grappling tournaments because it just kind of doesn't really do anything other than pose an injury. No one's really going to tap to a can opener uh, in the modern day. But, uh, yeah, Coleman called upon it and got it done. It opened uh, a way up to the next round of the Pride 2000 Grand Prix. Uh, this first matchup was in January of 2000, and then the athletes got uh, a good bit of time to rest for the one-night tournament finale, which was in May of that year. Up next for the Hammer is the man they call Mr. Pride. He wasn't afraid of anybody, and uh, at this time, I think his record was like 6-2 and two with four draws or something like that. I'm talking about Akira Shoji, uh, who had a, a run throughout all of Pride Fighting Championships history. And uh, he had some interesting wins here, some wins that maybe people didn't necessarily think he was going to get. I didn't expect him to beat Guy Mesker. He had a win over Guy Mesker, uh, a win over Voligi Ishmael. Uh, and now he's trying to get a win over Mark the Hammer Coleman. Can he do it? Or will the Hammer reign supreme once again? Let's find out. It's the best swings of Mark the Hammer Coleman right here on UFC Fight Pass. Bye. Probably... Not as fast as I, I, I think he got in my fight with him. And here he is, Mark the Hammer Coleman. But he's going to shoot him and get on the ground. He probably will explode for a minute. 
Former, then he'll focus himself a little bit. Former three-time UFC champion. He won two UFC eight-man tournaments. He also won a UFC super fight against Dan Severn. And here's his opponent, Akira Shoji. Making his way up. Uh, both men uh, entered the Grand Prix opening round in January. Uh, Mr. Mark Coleman won by a neck crank, as you mentioned, to Masaki Satake in 114 in January. And Mr. Shoji uh, made it into the finals here on, uh, in May by a decision over Ebenezer Fontes Braga from Brazil. Mm, yeah, was a, I saw that fight, interesting fight, both of them. But it's Coleman, he's a strong competitor, but we're going to see how he fights this fight. I know when he gets on the ground, he's going to make a quick explosion. After that, he's going to focus on control and strikes. And here we go. All right, here it is. Uh, Milicic has spoke very highly of uh, Mark Coleman's new stand-up ability, so we're going to see some of that. Uh, we might even see some boxing. Um, out of Mark? Out of Mark. Um, Milicic told me, he said, his stand-up is much better. He came in and with an open mind and picked up things really quick, basically did everything we asked him to do. Watch out for some KOs. Those are Pat Milicic's He's words. actually throwing a jab. He's throwing a jab now. Do a decent job. Yeah, Coleman is really excited about getting back in here. He's uh, he feels that this is the uh, the best tournament that he's ever been in, and he feels it's an unbelievable group of people. Uh, he feels very fortunate to be lucky, and he's trained as hard as he possibly could, and he's looking forward to getting back on top of the sport, as he says. Coleman is boxing fairly well. Oh, nice low kick by Shoji. He's not worried about the first few. The first few aren't going to really matter because he's going to shoot it pretty soon. But he's, he's cracking pretty hard. If Coleman is thinking boxing, he might start eating low kicks. If he's not thinking wrestling, because his forte is wrestling. We know him as the wrestler, but right now he might be thinking boxing because Soji will uh, exploit that by using the low kick, which is the uh, defeating factor for a straight boxer. He's going to shoot soon, Marcus. You see, slowly inch himself in, inch himself in. He's going to try to corner him and shoot in. Oh, he's going to punch. That's what he's going to punch, though. He's going to hit him in the ground. Oh, uh, this is the pat. Pat's going to throw, 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 throw more jabs. Oh. oh, there's a knee by Coleman. Coleman tries the single, and he gets the single leg. And he's down into a half guard. See, you notice he's really calm down. See, that's how he's going to attack right now. What? 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 Is he tapping? Is he oh, no. Bullshit! Oh, there seems to be some kind of controversy. I think uh, Coleman did land the knee, and Coleman's angry. I hope he can regain his composure. Uh, I, Coleman doesn't want to get angry here and get out of his game plan. He landed a knee. Uh, there could have been a low blow, that's what they're saying. There was a knee before they went down, and he may have fallen on him with his knee. Yeah, it's... And Soji is not one to fake. No. Uh, you know, Coleman's got to keep his composure. He's got to stay cool. He can't let this get to him because that will throw him out of his game plan. Yeah. I think one of the things that you did when you fought Mark Coleman, you got him out of his game plan. You got under his skin a little bit verbally, and then it made him make some mistakes. Yeah, that's the thing. He has to stay focused in the game. He has to stay focused. Stay focused in the fight, and don't let it bother him, you know. But, you know, that comes with he's a competitor like that. I mean, he has to learn to control Okay, here's that. the knee. Okay. Oh, yeah, it is a low shot. It was a little bit low. It was right on the... It was like... But it wasn't purpose. Yeah, it was, it was not a purpose. But it looks like they're going to go for a yellow card. Uh, so they're going to give him a warning. But Coleman can't let this get to him. He's got to stay cool. Okay, there's the knee again. And, uh, watch. Yeah. It was, it was an unintentional knee by Mark Coleman. Shoji is recovering. And uh, Coleman has gotten a warning, which means he was issued a yellow card. I don't think it will be a factor because Mark did not do it on purpose. Mark is not a cheap shot guy. He's a real honest, straight-up guy. Shoji's back in the fight. And Shoji's been fighting pretty smart so far, uh, using the low kick to neutralize the boxing. Shoji comes in with a flurry. Right hand right by corner. corner. Just grazed off the top of the head of Shoji. Good thing Shoji ducked. I don't know that one. Good thing. Because that was a hard shot. Coleman's coming up on some serious he's level. Out, he's, his mind's at the game. He wants to kill him. That's when you got to flip and relax. Yeah, he's got to make sure he doesn't you know, shoot his energy. Uh, Shoji is good in this guard position. We know that. We know he's really good at jujitsu. 
Shoji is from the A3 gym here in Japan. He's uh, on the bottom. Doesn't seem worried. Seems very relaxed. Bowman stacking up high. A lot of fighters now, they're not, the, they're not really focused, worried about getting hit in the bottom. They are relaxing. The sports have evolved to the level it's now. It's incredible. It's beautiful. Well, here, uh, Coleman is going to the body with the right hand. That's who I would play it if I was born. Yeah, he's going to the body, then the head. Stay in the box, stay on top of control, and strike. Don't try to break the guard, just be careful with the arm bar. One thing that I'm impressed with Mark Coleman is he's, he's throwing short punches to the head. He's not and trying, the body. Yeah, and he's not trying to loop his punches, so he's not going to spend the kind of energy he may have spent at the early part of his career. He's going to look like he might be thinking about that neck, neck crank. crank yeah, he's yeah. going, he's thinking neck crank, but, but Shoji, high up yeah, Shoji knows the good defense against the neck crank. I don't think Shoji's going to get neck cranked in this fight. <laughs> Shoji, if anything, is one of the ultimate survivors in the pride uh, circuit. He's never lost uh, by a tap out. He's only lost one fight, and that was to Igor Bochanchin. Mark's throwing some serious leather, boy. He's trying, to, he's trying to kill this guy's ribs here. So this would be the thing where the wrestlers will have an advantage, the control factor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, he's throwing some serious body shots. <laughs> Well, Shoji's tucking up real tight with that knee and that elbow. But look at those red, red marks. He's getting welts on the side of his left uh, rib cage. But in a way, if you let Mark do that, he's going to tire out eventually. It's, you can't maintain that kind of power for that length of time. Now, this is reminiscent of a fight that Don Fry had against Mark Hall, where he just punched and punched and punched and punched, almost punched himself out. Yeah. And they had to continue in the tournament. Uh, but Coleman is not expending the kind of energy Fry did against Mark Hall in that UFC fight. He's, he's expending a bit, but not. But how long will he maintain? You it's a 15-minute round, right? Yeah. So you how know, long can you maintain that? Because Coleman now has a reasonably good stand-up game. He, I don't think that uh, Pat would be adverse to him popping back up and going stand up. Why not? Why because not? He, he might be able to hurt, because he, he's got the guy hurt oh, oh, with oh, oh, body oh, punches oh, so far. Oh, Five minutes past. So we've got 10 minutes left, and Coleman has basically been all over Shoji. Uh, just in the control factor. Just in the control, right. That's all he has to do. That's all I would do. And that's what the wrestlers are going to have the advantage over most of the guys, because they can control the game. Oh, that side of Shoji is just looking yeah. bad. But it may be more cosmetic than anything, because Shoji has a little bit of a layer of, of flesh there. He's not really cut. Usually, Mo. Oh, now they're going to restart them uh, because they're starting to slide out of the ring. Well, in, in, in Pride rules, if fighters are engaged in a fight and they start to slide out of the ring, they will reset the fighters and make them start in the same position. Right. Now, uh, Shoji has the kind of body type where the body punches will look bad, but because he's got that layer of skin, unlike a person who's really cut, it won't hurt him as much, right? Layer of fat, basically. Steve. Yeah. Let's just be honest here. He's got a little layer of fat that's going to help him. Fat's a good thing. Too. Yes, Mo. <laughs> no, I, I, I know I can count on my, my <laughs> colleague and, and friend, Ray Smith, to cut to the chase. I will I have to be neutral here, but... Uh, no, Mark's playing a smart He's playing a pretty smart, but how long can you maintain this pressure is another issue. Shoji has strictly been in defensive mode since they went on the ground. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of options because Coleman has never been tapped out in a fight from a submission hole. Well, he did have the one with Takata. That's the other part with Oh, that's right. Actually, it was, a, it was a heel hook, wasn't it? You're right. It was a heel hook. Yeah, it was a... So I, I stand corrected. Uh, Coleman was <clears throat> submitted by Nobuhiko Takata. Yes. Gallant fight. Yeah, it was a... a Anyway, Mr. Shoji, um, looks like he's showing some, uh oh Cohen's starting to land to the head now. See, I personally don't like the closed guard for this kind of fighting. I think the open guard's a much better guard. I mean, the legs are in, between the other guy's legs. Yeah, you've got more options. you got more options. You can move away from these, a lot of these strikes. Where in the closed guard, you're going to sit there and take a beating. Why? Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you because in the, the open guard, well, he can't sweep Coleman, but he can scoot him back. He can scoot him back, he can push him back, he can go underneath or whatever. There's a lot more options. In the closed guard, you have that one option, take a beat. Even Gracie didn't fight, even Hoist didn't fight the closed guard too much in this fight. He fought the open guard a little bit. 
not the way that I, I would do it, but as far as the way I, I use my open guard, but he definitely did. His legs were always kept open to the move. Shoji's throwing a little backhand, but nothing, nothing on it. Well, right now, Shoji's losing this round. And this is a round that we can count. Yes, this is a round to where if, if Coleman continues in this way, then we're back on the judge system yes. after the Hoist Gracie fights because uh, now all fights. Oh, Shoji pops back up. Shoji's got to get busy do something. Uh, I think he's thinking that Coleman's going to gas out as well. That's what I'm thinking. But uh, it doesn't look like Coleman. Coleman's got a lot of energy. Militich was correct in saying that Coleman's uh, stamina is much improved. And his boxing ability looks pretty decent. It's a lot better. But Coleman so far has dominated. Now, this is going to bring about a little bit of a thing. This has not been a close fight. But we have that uh, 10 kilogram rule that the lighter fighter gets the edge in scoring. But I, I think that Coleman has pretty much controlled this fight. So oh, yeah, he's controlled this nice fight. trip take down there by Mark Coleman back into the guard of Akira Soji. But I can't see how that would be a factor in, in giving this a draw round. No, I don't. I have to agree with you on that one, Steve. So we're here at the Tokyo Dome for the Pride Fighting Championships 2000. Akira Shoji on the bottom, taking punch after punch from Mark Coleman. And like I said, this is going to be difficult for the guy in the bottom to fight the wrestlers because since he does no stand. Look at that side, Maurice. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice work. It's, it's, it's good work to Mark's on. Mark's on. But since there's no stand-ups, this is going to be bad for the guys who don't have any wrestling background, really. So, Jiu-Jitsu does not fare well, nor does a kickbox for the most part fare well, fare well against the wrestlers on the ground. This is what he's going to control it. Yeah, I know with uh, your fight against Coleman, endurance was the major factor in that. Major factor. I mean, you had good defense that you had learned from, you know, the Shamrocks and the Lions Den yes. and some of the other people you trained with, but the endurance, but you, you give Coleman some endurance. Um, Coleman really trying to tee off. Now, Coleman's got the side mount, and if he gets the mounted position, this could be good. This could be good. Now, the mount's not a well, now he's got his back. Now Coleman has got no towards this. Oh, good punch by Coleman. Uh, Shoji, Coach has got a cut. Shoji's yeah, he's got, got a cut. cut and he's, uh, he's really starting to take a beating. I wouldn't be surprised if Coleman just turned this into a boxing match and wanted to keep it standing. Because on the ground, Shoji has no shot. Um, Shoji is getting lumped up now. Coleman is virtually unscathed by the fight so far. Shoji just measuring his man, going in with a jab. Oh, uppercut. Oh, good uppercut by Mark Coleman. It kind of grazed off the front of Shoji's face. Otherwise, it could have had some pretty bad consequences. Absolutely. Because that was a Hail Mary swinging from the rafters uppercut. Shoji should have, if he had better striking, it could be a better, a different fight. But right now, he doesn't, Mark feels comfortable on his feet because Shoji's not giving anything back. A couple of locations are going to make the whole fight. You got to hit Mark in the face. You have to jab back. Jab, Mark, jab. Coleman really looks good, but he's fighting a strong opponent. But yes. nonetheless, no, no, I mean, he's fighting well, Steve. He's fighting great. So he learned to get him to up. And back into the standing clinch. Coleman dropping down low. Good body, good body shot. shot by Mark Coleman. Good body shot, buddy. Going back to that nice. left side. Nice. Oh, that one hurt Shoji. Because he's moving now. He's, he's adjusting to the punches. Oh, that's that same side he was grinding away at while they were on the ground. That's uh, Shoji's left side, which is getting pretty ugly. What Shoji should do is make the mark. Mark make through, fight. Half, mark through a right hook to the half, leg. Yeah. We're, See, seeing, we're seeing more of that now. There's no offense on Shoji's side, so therefore there's no fear for Mark. Well, 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 you have to fight well, back well, in order to make the guy well, his game plan. Three right, minutes left. Yeah, right now, Shoji's not going on the game plan. He's just letting Mark do what he wants. He's having his way with him. At this point, as valiant a warrior as Shoji is, now Mark Coleman's throwing knees, as valiant a warrior as Shoji is, he needs, in my opinion, a knockout or at least a couple knockdowns to get in this fight to where it would be at least a draw. Shoji's watching himself fight, to tell you the truth. He's looking at the monitor watching himself fight. Well, there's one thing about Shoji. I mean, he epitomizes the word tough. I mean, he can really take 
taking some shots. Oh, oh, that was a beautiful, oh, good right hand by Mark Coleman. Coleman was right on the money. Soji's got a good chin. He's got a good chin. Uppercut followed by a hook if he puts I mean, his head down again. Coleman's right punches are educated no punches now. Soji's short. Digging. Soji's short. grabbing a short. Standing. That's, that's even short. more brutal than when they were on Soji, the ground. what I would do, I'd make Mark fight me. Even though he's fighting, he's not fighting. Left like, he's fighting at his own you pace. Go. Yeah. You gotta make him grab his do pace. Again, oh, his right his face is a mess right now. And it's just the first one. Right right that right eye of his looks horrible. Shoji's blinking pretty hard. If I was Shoji's corner, I'd probably throw the towel in now because it's not, he's not fighting. He has no offense. He, he, he wouldn't wait till the end of the round? Well, after this fight, definitely. After this round, definitely. He's not throwing any offense. He's only doing his receiving. Yeah, he's taking a beating, that's for sure. Oh, Shoji tries to locate. Coleman steps in. Oh, trying to spin him back. Coleman stepped in. Good move by Coleman. Coleman has vastly improved his stand-up here. Shoji takes Mark Coleman down. Yeah, reversed it in the air. Unbelievable. And look at him fighting back. Top of wizard, Mark <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, but Mark's going to muscle out of it. He's going to muscle out. Use a little bit of energy to get back out. That was really a valiant, a valiant move by Shoji. Half a wizard. If the ropes weren't there, he would have got it. But the ropes actually helped him control him for a second. Worked for him and against him. On the bottom, they worked for, uh, for him. So, let's phrase that. And he threw him, it stopped him going completely over, but it held him there for a second. I think that uh, you have a valid point about Shoji's uh, uh, corner throwing in the towel because Shoji's looking pretty bad. Yeah, it's not worth it. You, know, you can always fight again. Exactly. That's one thing. Uh, with open weight tournaments, now that a lot of the guys, they're getting comparable skills, it's really tough for the small guys to beat the, the big guys like it was in the beginning when, when people like Hoist Gracie came on with a lot of skills and were fighting guys with a little less skill. Less or none. But weight is a factor now. It definitely is. That's the end of round one. Mark Coleman virtually put a beating on Akira Shoji on the ground and standing. Uh, Mark got a little upset early on when they called a uh, knee that he threw to the body, which was a little low, one as more, a right? low blow. And uh, one more round, this. This is a one more, it's three rounds, or this is it? Uh, no, it's uh, this shouldn't be an overtime, I don't think. No, it's a uh, one 15 minute one round. One 15 minute round, well, then he wins. Yeah, it's one 15 minute round. Yeah. But to look at it, like they're going for another round. Okay, we're looking at a judge's decision in this. So they're going to come to the center of the ring to announce. Now, Coleman's on top. He's, he's hammering away. Thus, the name Mark the Hammer Coleman going to the body and the head. And here we are for the judge's decision. Yeah, it's not going to go in. It's, 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 no, it's, no, it's decisive. Mark won the fight. There's no question. I cannot picture how they could come to any other conclusion. And Okay, it's a unanimous decision victory. A dominant one-sided victory for Mark Coleman. Mark Coleman. Mark Coleman advances in the Pride Fighting Championship 2000 with a dominant victory. And look at that. That's sort of what the sport, the camaraderie, the sports is doing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Mark Coleman getting it done over Akira Shoji. And like I said, two down. Now just two more to go. It's a 16-man tournament in Pride Fighting Championships back in 2000 and Open Weight Grand Prix, which is why you saw the much smaller man in Akira Shoji take on Mark Coleman. Now, the way that the tournament was breaking down, it looked like Coleman was on his way to the semifinals to take on Kazuyuki Fujita. But Fujita walked into the ring, and they threw the towel immediately. Fujita had a very tough time against Mark Kerr, not Coleman. Kerr's teammate, though, uh, was Coleman. And uh, Kerr kind of did Coleman a favor 
by uh, beating up Kazuyuki Fujita so much that Fujita couldn't continue. However, Fujita did win. He did earn his spot in the semifinals because uh, Kerr kind of gassed out. But uh, no need to see Fujita just throw the towel here. Um, so we're already off to the Pride Grand Prix Tournament finale. Who's going to be standing in Mark Coleman's way? Ice cold, eager of a chance. One of my favorite fighters from the Pride era, uh, Igor was, was I mean, I, I, it's hard for me as a fat guy to say this. Igor was a pudgy heavyweight. Probably should have been fighting at 205 pounds. Uh, should have been fighting at 185 pounds. Really, you're going to see that uh, on display here uh, against Coleman. Just kind of outsized. Not necessarily outgunned, but uh, outsized to say the least. All right, Mark Coleman. One win away from MMA immortality. Let's see if he can get it done in Japan. It's the Hammer's Best Swings right here on UFC Fight Pass. This tournament has been nothing short of phenomenal. Every fight has just been a barn burner. Except the fight between uh, Coleman and Fujita. Yeah, yeah well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, guys, here it goes. Right, don't tell me what to do, okay? Okay, there we go. Okay, here we go. Will it be a boxing match or will Coleman shoot? We'll He's soon find shoot. out. But he has to punch first. Let him think he's going to box. He looks a little nervous. He's not being very aggressive. Right now. He never usually is. He usually sets the guy up. Like when he fought Francisco Bueno, he just circled him for about a minute and then dropped the bomb. You think he's going to low kick? Got good reflexes, Mark. It's going to be a beautiful fight. Here so. he comes. There's the shoot. We know it would happen. And he drives in, takes Igor down into the guard. Beautiful thing, Tom. Now, this is what Mark wants him to do. Just sit there and hold him in the guard. That's what I would do. Why? Well, why try to break it? Just beat down on him. It's yeah. a long night, though. I think this is this is a good strategy for him because Coleman doesn't want to, even though he's new at stand-up fight, doesn't want to sit there and stand up with Igor, because Igor's been there too many times. And on the ground like this, yeah, you know, this is, the, to me, the way he's standing is a lot of waste of energy. He should sit down so he's not working so hard and just fight from the bottom, just fight from the, on his knees. This is energy. And, you know, I think he has to understand what he's, you know, he's doing. I mean, he's improved a lot. There's no question. He's improved a lot since 14 and the other fights he's had in the UFC. He's a mature fighter, and he's had he has a tough fight here with Bochenchen. Now, it just depends on how Bochenchen is going to play him, because Bochenchen can take a lot of punishment. Yes, he can. And, you know, and, and Bochenchen has a unique way, because he's got the shorter legs of getting those under the guy, pushing the guy back, popping back up, and throwing the punch or the knee to the head. The thing is, go ahead, boss. Oh, no, I said Mark is starting again with his right hands to the body. Yeah. The body shot. I think he's going to continue his work, what he did with uh, Georgie. Georgie. Yeah. Right, right. I, what I said also, he has to work to the liver, you know, give him the left hooks, you know. That's more effect. Well, you know, you got to understand. You got to call before you can walk. He's not a striker. He's a grappler. I know, but hey, <laughs> he, he's he is a striker. For, he's a striker now, though. That's he's what I say. He's doing it. No but way. it's not in his, in his, in his makeup yet to, do, to think that way. Okay. Right now, he feels comfortable with his right hand. That's all he feels. That's where his power is at. He, it's, he doesn't... To say he doesn't really understand the value of the left hand, it's not so much to knock somebody out. It's, it's, a, it's a setup. It's a distraction. He's the only thing is to hurt, hurt, hurt. That's Mark's style. He doesn't believe in tap, tap. You know. he's, not a, he's not a finesse fighter. No. Right? He's no. Bust, bust, bust. Balls. Get my name. Monolo. Yeah, it's that time of the evening, folks. <laughs> But, you know, like I said, I personally wouldn't stay up like that, Mark. But he's having control because it's me that's energy. I mean, you got a long night. I would pass the guard. Oh, uh, pass this, uh, yeah, his guard because it's constantly open. And he can do it, you know. Oh, well, he's side control. Yeah. And the, it's much better for It's him. a better position. I mean, everybody thinks the guard is a great position. Maybe for jiu-jitsu it's a great position, but for fighting, it's a, it's, it's kind of it's counteractive counter, counter because you can't. He's going to try that neck crank, it looks like, but it's going to be really hard for Igor because Igor just, his build is... What neck? <laughs> you got no <laughs> neck, right? no neck. And he's really got a strong, you know, neck. But if you notice the difference in this fight compared to Shoji's fight, Mark's being very patient. There you go, there he's you not go. going out there to try to bust, you know, bust up on him. I think he knew because Igor outweighs Shoji by at least It'll 25, 30 pounds. Well, no, he's, he's got a long neck. Yeah. 
he wanted to get the Shoji one over with it. Now this is no round, but, you know, one round, get it over with, dominate, which he did. And Igor saving his gas tank here, too. Um, we've seen Igor against Mark Kerr pop back up and just blister him with right hands over the top. There you go. Use that damn left hand. It hits hard. Let out, let out. It's open. It's open up. It's open now. I wonder if this is going to be the game plan on that. Back to his body. Well, if it were you, what would you do? Would you be the aggressor in this situation? Because now it's the last, if it's I the last the, fight. The, the, the qualities, what Coleman have the wrestling qualities, I will pass this guy go to side control yeah. and beat him up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, throw the And he has that quality because he's just strong and he's a very good wrestler. <laughs> and once he's on the side, you know, it's very difficult like. to get a guy up like that because that's their game. Yeah, a guy like this, and he could really do the knee attack too from the side now. It's now, what, 11 o'clock here, and the house is still packed. The fans the must really enjoy the fight, because I know I am. Oh, this is great. But this is going to be a, a fight of patience. How much patience does Coleman have? How much does Eager have? If the left shots to the body. Five minutes yes. pass. You know, both these men are experienced at this game. Uh, Igor has close to double the experience Coleman does, but Coleman has been in some tough fights with some of the greater fights. Now, Igor's striking from the bottom a little bit. And that's what I would do, fight from the bottom. A lot of guys don't do that. You have to. There, there you, you go. go. Just like Boss said, get into the side bound. You think he'll go for the crank, the Coleman crank? He's going to go for sure for the Coleman crank. But I, I never got that because it's easy to escape. You only have to twist on your side, and then the pressure of your chest is off. So I think the knee to the back of the head is always nice. Yeah, that was really <laughs> nice. Well, that's how you got out of here with, with Mark Coleman. Uh, it saved me, trust me. I think you actually gave him up when you did that. I think he was like seeing stars for a yeah. second. It's a hard one because what happens, even though you're right, but you get a little the Mark's weight on you, it's hard to twist over because he's very heavy. He's very heavy, and this very is heavy. his game, man. Yes. You don't get a guy out like that. This is like Olympic team wrestler. So this is not like a wrestler. This is an Olympic team, man. He made a way back on his hips a little bit. This is good. Way back on his hips. Yeah, only good fighting in Olympics and wrestling. There he comes. Oh shit! He's sending it up. I can say that. Huh? They told me. You've already yesterday. said it, baby. You've yeah. already said it. <laughs> The damage has been done, if any. They were restarting them closer to the center of the ring because they had uh, reached uh, close to the edge of the ring, going to slide out. They didn't want to have that happen. Coleman working the side mount. Now, we've seen one other long fight with Hoist Gracie and Kazushi Sakuraba. This one potentially could be long as well. Yeah, it was an exciting fight. It was a very, it's like I said to me, well, you, may, you may disagree, but it's like old school versus new school. And you have to start. I don't, I don't disagree at all. Was Mark not in uh, side control? He was, but he lost it. Oh. I thought they, they did, but then he, he got out. But yeah, the, the new style, hopefully the guys understand that the, the sport's evolved. And you have to evolve the sport. I mean, sure, you can say your style is good, and your style is good, and your style is good, but your style by itself isn't good enough anymore. It has to, you have to hybrid train. You have to train with other fighters that know the, their game. And this is what happened in the case of Poison's uh, fight. You just didn't have enough to strike it. Eager trying to scoot him up with those knees, but Coleman's still on top, still in control. And he'll be there. That's his game. Yep. Exactly right, man. It's like okay, a curve, you know? Once they're there, it's difficult to get them out. Yes. He's using his head. Literally. He's grinding away on the side of Igor's cheek. Coleman still chopping away with little backhands and punches to the head. This will be a test of endurance for sure. Yeah, definitely. And depending on where Igor's at, you know, uh, Coleman's been tested to go a half hour, half hour, yeah? We would do half hour with me and then what do you go with Morales? With uh, the distance? Ricardo Morales, that was a distance fight too. That was 20 minutes. So he can go that long at least. Yeah, and now, now you got $200,000 behind it, eh? Yeah. I think he, motivation. That, that double, double motivation. Yes. Right there. Yeah, they really want that money. 
Igor dropped some weight in this fight. He's actually about 10 pounds lighter than he was in the last Pride event on January 30th. So he trained a lot to get his cardio up. And the same thing. And this is a 20 minute round of unlimited rounds. Unlimited rounds. The fighters determine the destiny of, the, of this fight. Stop. Or you can go. And for 20,000, I'm sure they're going to go for a while. 200. The, yeah, the, the runner-up gets fifty thousand dollars. And good, but uh, if you're close to two hundred, you want to have the two hundred. <laughs> well, of course, of course. But and the uh, two uh, uh, third place guys get twenty-five thousand each. Oh, that is good money, man. Oh, that's great money. Even even if you uh, place, and it's on top of your appearance. Money. Yeah. Now let's hope this, this poor continues to grow because these fighters, all of these fighters who fight in this business, deserve. This, if not more, than any other fighter out there in the business. Even more than my love for kickboxing, even more than the sport of boxing. This is a hard fight. This is a test of two men. Not specialized sport in a sense, like, like in kickboxing and boxing, but two men fighting. Kind of like the old days of gladiators. Mm -hmm. and this is interesting. And, and, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't, it doesn't sell well in America yet, but this hopefully will open the eyes to the public again. That there's more fights out there, different companies, and it's, not, and it's still safe. Nobody's been killed. Oh, that was Thanks nice. Well, Chancellor yes. almost got away. He rolled out of the good. You got that kind of good. But I, I, that was good. I, he kept rolling with it. I, I completely agree with you on that, Mo. And I think that the tournament format is the best way to get the sport into the public eye. I think single fights, you get more trapped into some politics, whereas a tournament, people like tournaments. I remember when other events in the United States started out, they started doing tournaments and they had a big public following when they went to a single fight. Yeah. Yeah. But they lost some of their following. But difference being in that, go ahead, boss. Yeah, it's never honest. A tournament is not honest. Yeah, you can't trust You know, them. no, because one the, guy fights like uh, what, what you saw, some rubber, one and a half hour, and the other guy fights 50 minutes, you know? But the public likes the tournament. No, I think I the know. public likes the fighting, in my opinion, Steve, because I, as a fighter, would not want to fight a tournament necessarily because it's a lot of work. And it's, and, I think if you're a new fighter, a new fighter coming up, a tournament's important. But the top guys should have to fight so much to make some money. Well, uh, in this tournament, these guys have all been around, and this is, you know, a great dispute, tournament. Oh, no question. The dispute with me isn't that you're right. I'm just saying that I don't think a fighter should have to fight so much to get paid. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for the body, and one fight should be enough, typically. But for beginner guys just coming to the game to get recognized, yes, tournaments I think are good for them. See if they have what it takes to be a free fighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand your point. Because once you establish yourself, you shouldn't have to fight three fights in a night. It's like the K1, you know, they're going to do the same thing now. They're going to do the same format now, where it's just going to be three fights in a night or whatever. That's not how I work on it, especially in just strike fighting. Strike. Just strike fighting, that's going to be hard. Yeah, well, they, they've been doing that for years. No, 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 no. They're going to the tournament more every fight from this point on. Every fight's going to be a tournament. Oh, oh the K1? yes. God, really? Yes. Because I, I see with, with me, I think that what Pride has done or what the K1 has been doing for you know the last seven go. years nice. is to have the qualifying events, single fights, all the way up until the final, and then do what Pride did this time, have the tournament of their champion. That's what it was. But now they decided to change. They wanted to think of it kind of like in the, in the sense of soccer, how they run their tournaments. Right. But this is different. This is physical yeah, you, <laughs> punishment. You yeah, know. I mean, Clashing shams oh, and, and heads and everything. Look, look at the right hand Gomez giving Gomez. Yeah, that's what they're having doing. impact. Trust me. Yeah. He's doing good cheek. There we go again. Yeah. But eager stick. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's thick. thick. So it's not gonna have the same impact as it did. No, that's why you were so thick. Yeah. Yeah, but, but eager thick, thick. Look at how thick he is. His, his girth. <laughs> Girth you know, he doesn't. Girth being in circumference. <laughs> circumference. Very good, though. <laughs> you know, Igor does not look like his spirit has been broken one bit, though. He's got, you know, in his country, he's going to be a millionaire after this fight. This is a lot to give. It's a lot to lose. Him. But see, if it were me, I'd go for the head more to make him bleed, to make him stop. You know, just keep cutting him open. Yeah. Whether the body's cool, but it's not a smart thing to make. Continue there. Head, body, body, head, 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 head. Make the guy bleed. Make his eyes close. Yes. Make his eyes swell up so he can't see. Make the fight stop on that on that way. But this is this is what Tommy knows. And like I said, I wouldn't be in that guard that 
that uh, more chances than I'd be in the open guard so I can get out or move away. Which <laughs> <laughs> has that move down pretty well because as soon as, Cur as, soon as Coleman rolls him over, he just continues to roll over instead of staying flat. That's I like that. No, it makes a lot of sense. If you stay flat when you pass it, you'll be upside control. Yeah, you can now. Yes. Side control, ladies and gentlemen. This is good. Turn on your left hip so you can unhook your left leg. Now we can work again for that hammer lock where he was working on. Get that out of there. Get that out of there. Changed the position the last time. Keep this going. Which is very strong, too, though. This is going to be hard to get that. Because he's short, he's stout. He has a lot, he's, he's like for myself, even yourself, boss, for longer, longer limbs. He goes short. It's gonna be hard to get this kind of move back there. I would just do like that, go for his face. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Boy, he's starting to really land on that left side of Igor's head. This is Mr. Inoki. This is the crowd, they love the man still. They show him, they get the cheers. Man's a legend, you know. That's a status that's not easily attained in this world. Oh, Mark's going to muscle out of it. See, he's trying to muscle into that. He start, you see, look at Mark's face now. He's starting to work hard. And this may not be such a good thing for him. Because if you look at him, he's really straight. He wants to muscle a good move in. And he's, like, he's going to burn our energy. There we go. So look at his face. Yeah, he's trying, he's trying really hard right now. Put your shit on his belly. I got this guy, man, if he wants. Get the side now, T lock. Turn, 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 turn. Turn. This guy. Oh, I guess he's not good. He's not good. He's not good. He's bad. He's not good. No, he's scared. He's all right. He's, My God. He's real short. He's stout. Look at this. See? Uh oh. Okay, there you go. Now he's going to get out. Now he's going to get out. There you go, see? But he's smart. He caught it. He realized that, hey, that's yeah, how it works. Exactly. He gave it up. See, that's good. That's what he caught it. He's going to board again. Thinks he's got it. He has to shove oh. his hand over the ground to either side. You think to the back? Yes. He has to push it to the left. So come to the left. Over the ground. There. Further, further. No, 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 not like this. Not that way. That's lack of experience. You know? yeah. That's I tell you one thing, though. Igor is strong. And yet, no, no, but he, he can finish it easy if he did it. Pull it down towards his hips. Here. Yeah, to the hips. And then you lift it up the elbow. That's it. Now he's... Uh, there is a... Uh, this cost a lot of power. Yeah, he, he used a lot of energy trying to get that feel on. But he, you know, you're right, but he didn't do a lot like I thought he would in the past. I'm gonna right. get it, I'm gonna get it, I'm yeah. gonna get it. He did it up. Okay, it's not there. Let me try again. So you can say Marcus matured to fight him. Is that the same fighter he was in the first UFC 10, 12, whatever it was, 11, 12, 12. 10, 11. So he's definitely matured as a fighter now. He's a, little, he's a lot smarter in a way that he's not going to burn his energy. But still, the thing is, if Lucic was, he tried to get into Mark's head by making Mark exert a lot of energy. He's not done. He just kind of defensive. He's got to move so Mark can move. You know. Uh, scoot away so Mark will chase him, make Mark burn energy. Yeah. Well, Mark said that he's got a much more serious attitude about uh, fighting than he did three and a half years ago. And he says it's become a job now. Uh, back then it was more fun. I, he attributes part of that to the fact that he now has two daughters. Yeah, there's been a lot of change for him. Good game, yeah, I like that. He's, he's doing it. Right. He's finding a smart game. Who looks tired? The most tired right now? Nobody. Look at the face of Mark. Look at the face of Igor. Well, it's hard to see Mark's face right now because he's buried in Igor's chest. But yeah, Igor does look like he's very not relaxed. As tired. Yeah, he's, he's very not, relaxed. He's not doing anything. Mark's doing the work, and that is taking up against him. If I was Igor, I'd be moving and make Mark chase me, you know, because that's going to burn energy. Look at Mark's face. He's all red now. He's really blown up. But he's okay. But he's really, he's, it's the next two, three rounds that the fight's going to change. Up. Yeah, I think so. The automatic stand-up at the beginning of each uh, round will be real interesting. I think he should pass the guard again. Go to the side. I just punched his head. I would see, the body shot is going to hurt, but it's not going to stop a fighter that's good. thick as he is. I'd go for the head to mess up his eyes, hurt his nose, make him bleed, make him cut. It would make it a lot easier to fight, you know, to end quicker because of cut. 
Yeah, I know uh, when you fought uh, Coleman, you used your hand over his mouth a couple times for a good advantage because when he was getting winded, he did it one time and he really got winded, and then you reversed him and stood back up, and it was hard for him to take it down after that. Yeah. Uh, like I said, everybody's changed. Everybody's smarter now. The game is See, Mark still can't. I mean, the remnants of Mark will be in the next round when he gets tired. Then you're going to see what he has because he's, like I said, he, or is his eyes swollen? What is it? Maybe his eyes swollen. That's what I'm saying. I think he's doing good condition wise. About one minute left. Huh? I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, look at Mark kind of smile up too. Yeah, exactly. That's what I, I, knew. I was waiting for him to do that. One minute left. Well, it's been a real strategic fight for Mark Coleman. It hasn't been a real exciting fight. No, but like you said, strategy is the whole thing. And the eager thing is to hope. I think I would think he's going to think that Mark's going to tire out. Let him blow, let him blow, let him blow. <laughs> yeah, and then he's going to tire out. It's going to be in the favor for Igor, the yeah. unlimited rounds. Because he fought long rounds. Yeah. But then again, Mark did two in his last fight, so... And Mark uses his head a lot. Now, I don't know if that's in the rules to so use your head, but that's the that's <laughs> well, As long as he's not striking with yeah. it, I guess he's pushing with it. But uh, Igor evidently fought two 30-minute fights in one turn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One of his Russian uh, tournaments. Okay. Mark looks really eye. good. He's got a cut in his eye, though. Yeah, it's those, those heads in close proximity that must have done it because I don't know that Igor landed a strike. No. That enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe Mark did it himself by using his head. Look at the man. Sakuraba. Mr. Sakuraba, the hero of the Pride Fighting uh, Championships 2000. It's so an Inouye. Look at Inouye. Very famous person over here in Japan. Also fought in the UFC. Against a Roller Grace, Roller Hoist Alger. No, Hoist Alger. Royce Alger. You want to say Hoist, right? Hey, it's whatever. It's, it's yeah. either, well, in America, it would be Royce, but yeah. since I'm with the Brazilians talking to them, i got to be Hoist or Royce. The R the Alger. That's you in the beginning, eh? Vixen. <laughs> okay, here it is. Uh, Coleman in uh, side control, going for that key lock and really twisting it hard, but Igor doesn't seem to be worried about it at all. Because uh, the position, like Boss said, he's, not, he's, too high, he's too high up. Yeah, it's, and, and he can roll out. If you bring the elbow here, he cannot bridge out. Right. See, he itched his body out a little bit. Yeah, he's really trying for that, but then he gave it, he backed off, as we said, and then he went for it again when he thought he had a better position. He goes very relaxed. Completely relaxed. Well, he's doing the work on well, this move. Looks like uh, Pat's talking to him about it. Take it, yes, he's telling him everything. Take it down more. Yeah, cornerman Pat Mellich is, is coaching him on to keep that uh, elbow down toward the hip. Here it is again. Igor pops out, back into the guard. But Coleman stays on top. Here we go. Round two. Both Chanchen. There's uh, Gilbert Eibel right there. <laughs> from Holland. Yeah, very tough. He's a very exciting individual. Most exciting. Very charismatic. Yeah, charismatic and a, a wild fighter. One of the top no holds barred fighters in Holland currently. 22 years old, 220 pounds, 6'2. Ute. 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 You got the heat. Here we go. Round two. Well, I'm kind of surprised that Coleman didn't punch with Igor on the stand-up part. And his punches were showing good. But maybe he doesn't want to risk that because he's not because Igor will throw a punch. But look at his hands are down. Igor likes to slip from side to side and throw that overhand right or left. Yeah, typically to the right. Yes. And he does tend to dip to the left and throw that overhand right, the same way he did with Mark Kerr. 
and Marks will come in for a shoot again. Yeah, Marks' right eye is kind of swollen yeah. up. Yeah, probably from himself. Yeah, probably from rubbing his head against yeah. Igor's head. He's learning to cut. See how he's cutting the ring off? He's cutting the ring off. It's yeah. perfect. It's working good. There's the shoot. And he's got the single and he's got the slam. Down they go. Same position. Here we are. Igor on the bottom with the guard. Coleman on top. Getting ready to grind away with that right hand to the ribs. I think you're right about going to the left side with the left hook to deliver because if he could do that, he just switch position. Yeah. And he did it a few times. You see it? You can see the marks on his on his side. Nice poke. Nice poke. Good. Oh, he's doing it. Very good. And again and again. Edgar slaps back right on the ear, but uh, that was one strike. To <laughs> Yes, I go for the head more. I would go for the just, just like just to try to break so a, a swollen eye. That's not gonna work. That's energy. Don't do that, Mark. That's energy. Doesn't seem to be a lot of coaching from Pat Milicic. He's probably just gonna let Mark do his thing. This is Pat. He's soft spoken. You know, he's not gonna sit there and scream, scream, scream. Which is necessary. <laughs> Especially in Japan, nobody talks. Nobody says <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, so you can hear them anyway, because they're a very quiet crowd. Yeah, you can hear a pin drop sometimes in one of these matches where they get on the ground. On the inside on it. Like right now. Somebody just called there like 60 rows back and you can hear them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think the crowd is here for the finish. Yeah, I think so. They're not going anywhere. They want to know. It's 11 o'clock here, 11.15, they're still here. Like I said, they want to see the end of this fight. It could be an hour, it could be 15 minutes, it could be two hours. It's too much the most. It can be 10 hours. I won't be here that long. I'm sorry. Okay, there he goes. He's passing the guard into the side mount again between the corner. Post between you and him with your left. Anytime soon, referee Shimada will be resetting them toward the center of the ring. Is he going to get all tied up and connected on the ropes? Igor's got his leg up on the ropes now. Yeah. Now, this is a bad position because Mark can throw that knee. This is a bad position for Igor Hope Champion. This is like her and the Champion. Yeah, oh my it's God. It's the opposite because. Yes. Because. Uh, well, Champion was about to last time. Bring him right. straight Mark down. Mark straight down. Igor is facing down, and that's yeah. a now the There you go. Oh, those are good knees. Oh, those are good knees. But if you block him, it's going to still hurt his arm. Stop it! Oh, he got it! This is great! He made the Oh, oh, oh! oh. <laughs> Victory. Probably the toughest, oh, for sure the toughest tournament he ever fought in. The winner is Mr. Mark what a tremendous victory. Mark Coleman prevails, wins the Pride Fighting Championship 2000 tournament. Congratulations, to Mark. I want to say something to your big fans. You know, Igor did the right thing by tapping out because he was going to take a He was getting beating. a lot of knees oh, in the head. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he'll come back because Igor, he's a dangerous guy. He's got to, as you say, Mark, I mean, uh, Mo, he's got to learn to, to fight better on the, on the ground. Yeah, there. You know, and I think that'll be one lesson he'll learn. I feel like the luckiest man in the world right now. Oh, I'm going to Thank you for supporting me. When I was so far down, I had climbed back to the top. <laughs> He's giving the fans their, their appreciation. Yeah, I feel it. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. I can't believe it. Thank you. You know, Mark, you know, he really hit the depths with his three back-to-back, -back, well, I mean, those yes. three losses. I mean, that was devastating. 
many people would have quit the sport and gone back to wrestling or done something yes, else. But he stuck it out, yeah, he did. learned the game oh, again, got good training, and now he's back at the top of the mixed martial art heat. He's number one right now. He's number Eagle, one, man. He's number one. He beat the top fighter. Yes, he did. He beat Eagle Mark Jansen. Mark, Mark Coleman is <laughs> number one right now. He's at the top of the sport once again. Congratulations, Mark. Unbelievable, man. Yes, congratulations, Mark. Unbelievable. Yeah. Hard work pays off. And here's the beautiful belt. Oh, that is a nice belt. Oh, that's an awesome belt. Did you keep that belt though? Mr. Naoto. My God. Morishita. Look at that belt. That's a serious belt. Oh, my God. This is great, man. This is, I mean, you know, what a surprise. We thought it was going to be Kerr. We thought it was going to be both Chanson in the finals. You know, it, 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 uh, Bowen was sort of a dark horse. Yeah, I think he beat, it'd be one of the two wrestlers I feel. I actually didn't see my boy Jensen until I talked to you. And the one I thought was going to be there actually was going to be Kerr, but he just didn't get his game on. You know, it just, just, didn't, just didn't happen for him tonight. So Bowen wins. Bowen wins. I think the, the, the basically the buy with Vegeta really helped him. Oh, a lot. A lot. Yeah, well, Jensen had a couple tough fights. Yeah. 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 gave Bowen Jensen a hard fight. <laughs> it's a little low, but it looks good. It's okay, yeah, it's, it's a big belt. I've never, have, you ever seen nice a, belt. have you ever seen a championship belt that big? No, oh, it's all like, that uh, nice to do. Oh, that's it's a, a nice, nice belt. Oh, yo. This is a Comeback kid, huh? That's right. He is the comeback kid. We thought Hoist Grizzly was the comeback And he came back rocking. Oh, yeah. Yes, he, did. he boxed tonight. He oh. could, and then he went back to what he knew. He went back to his wrestling. Passing the guard, going through the side, doing everything. He's going to get a satellite dish for free. So he can watch always. <laughs> yeah, right. He can watch all the pride. Fighting yeah, look at this crowd. Just look at this crowd. Yeah. Just standing ovation for Mark Coleman. This is a really emotional thing. And, you know, you got to give some credit to both chances. He hung in there. He stayed as long as he could. Unlimited time. You know. bucks extra. Oh, yeah. Good, huh? But the thing is, he got caught in the corner, you know? Was, yeah, he did. He got caught in the corner. He couldn't get out. That was a bad situation. Yeah. yeah, it was really bad. He would have really taken a foul. He was taking a foul. This is Igor's third loss. Sometimes he's, he's tapped out, but he will be back. No doubt. Mark Coleman has just shaken up the heavyweight division. There you go. There's the, but there's the real story right there. Yeah. Yeah. There is the man. And here he is, the star of the show. Kazushi Sakuraba. He gave a tremendous performance oh. against Boy Boyce Gracie and Eagle Go Oh my god, him and the great tournament, guys. Oh, yeah, this was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, this was phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, this was absolutely outstanding. I think this lived up to the expectations and surpassed them overall, really. There it is. $25,000. For the Sky TV satellite. Yeah, he gets his satellite. Yeah. I think it hit Mark, but not like he's going to hit him when he gets home with that chest. Uh, Brian Johnston is going to accept the other third place award for Fujita. Obviously, Fujita can't make it into the ring because of the knee injury. There it is. $25,000 richer. 
That's great. Excellent work. My God, that's good. What a good night. Beautiful night. You know, I think this really, really establishes the Pride Fighting Championship 2000 as a really formidable event. It really does. I mean, it makes this event into like a world-class thing. It's up there, you know, it's, it's in the league now with world-class soccer and some of the bigger events, baseball. You know, people, they like this kind of thing. Very conclusive finish there from Mark the Hammer Coleman. There he is with his belt and fastened again. And he's got plenty to celebrate about now. Let the party begin. There are the three guys. There they are. Third place, second place, and first place. Well, there you have it. Mark Coleman back to his winning ways. He wins the Pride GP of 2000. And uh, all is right with the world if you are a fan of the former UFC heavyweight champion. Now, the Pride Grand Prix champion and uh, champion of celebrations. Look at this. Mark Coleman uh, celebrating with such joy that you really know what this win meant to the man. Uh, I mean, his form could use a little uh, refining, shall we say. And then he goes into the crowd here, and look at this. Accidentally, I mean, I don't know if it's an accident, but he basically hits this dude with a right hand, and, uh, you know, you you win $200,000, uh, in 2000, uh, with this Pride Grand Prix win, you might be able to smack some random dudes uh, in the face. All right, next up for Mark Coleman uh, to try to smack in the face is Alon Goes, a dangerous Brazilian jiu-jitsu player. And this fight is pointed to uh, for a lot of reasons as to why maybe there's an argument for knees not being allowed to the head of a grounded opponent. I don't agree with that. If you know anything about me, I think we need to legalize uh, knees. Uh, Tell me if you're with me in the chat right now. Help me out. Because a position should not be a defense. That's all I'm going to say about it right here. But uh, along goes, finds the hard way uh, that maybe you shouldn't be on the floor taking knees for Mark Coleman. But also, you shouldn't really step into the ring or octagon with a guy who's like 40 pounds heavier than you. All right. That's all I'm going to say. Mark Coleman. He's the hammer once again against along goes right here on UFC Fight Pass. The last time I saw him in the Fight Grand Prix... He improved so much with striking, and that's one and a half year ago. So there is Alan Goods. Look how lean Coleman is. Right now he weighs 225 pounds. And that's the first time he's weighed that low of a weight since 1993, folks. So he's a lean, mean fighting machine tonight. Allen's looking at him, knowing what he has to do. He's got to get it on the mat. Coleman has made no secret about the fact he wants to keep it on his uh, feet and he wants to go for the KO. He also said, Mark Coleman did, that he wants to have a rematch with Pete Williams, the man who knocked him out with a high kick from the Lions game. He's got to get past goes first. And here we go, boss. Round one. A jump kick by goes. Yeah. The crouching tiger hidden dragon action there. <laughs> oh, look at this capoeira. Capoeira. I think he's just doing that to get him excited because he, he thinks maybe if Coleman just grabs the leg, they'll go to the ground, but it might work. We don't know. Goes for the single. Coleman getting him down. Coleman getting him into a 
home grinding away that right hand. Back to the body again. Allen, Allen's got to be careful of the knees here. Allen's got him down now. Allen's on the bottom. He's got home where he wants him. If Allen gets uh, a closed guard around him, Allen's going to have him where he wants him. But Coleman's pretty good at punching out of the guard. If I were Coleman, I'd stand up there. Oh, yeah. Stand, stand, stand up. So you don't want to play this game with Allen. He's playing Allen's game here. Allen wants this kind of a fight. He wants to be on the ground. Oh, that's a good shot. Coleman should throw a knee here to, to the top of Allen's head. There we go. There it is. He's not going to be able to take too many. Oh, he's knocked out. He, is he knocked out? I think he's, he's out. out. I think he's knocked out. He's out. He's, he's out. out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look, look at this. Look at this. He's attacking Mark. He's attacking Mark. He doesn't know what to do. Mark wants to hit him. A little controversy in the ring there. Uh, Coleman can go wild, too. He didn't know what to do. He, he didn't know he was doing it. I think he woke up, realized that <laughs> there was something going on, and he attacked Coleman right away. He thought that he, he, he'd never been out. It was like a blackout. Uh, I, I saw that happen before one time. There was a, there was a knockout in Holland. It was, uh, I believe it was Lucille Riker fought a tie. tie. She got knocked out. She kind of jumped the guy afterwards. There he is, Mark the Hammer coming. Wow. <laughs> I, I told you the last time when he was fighting, right now, in this shape like he is, it's going to be very difficult for anybody in the world to beat him. He's very strong. Oh my God, the time. It was 1 minute 19 seconds by strikes. I think that this, this whole event is going to go to the history books as fastest fight event ever. The longest shortest fight, the longest fight is four minutes and eight seconds. Well, this is the one that you don't want to go to the refrigerator for a uh, soft drink <laughs> because you might miss what's going to go on there. You know, he's going to get the, the belt to Coleman. Coleman getting another belt. Uh, Coleman already had that Pride Grand Prix uh, belt. And Milky going to congratulate Allen. Allen tried to, he tried to cop where move. He, did, he tried I, to trick him. He tried to, got him in the guard. The, the, the flying uh, jumping front kicks. Now we know that later on this evening, Igor Bokshansson is going to fight Trey Tullerman. But Igor lost to Coleman in last year's finals. Really wants a rematch with Coleman. Yeah, but <laughs> Coleman, yeah. yeah. He looks, he looks so impressive right now, but I have to say also, uh, if Igor gets the rematch, he deserves it also, because he had two tough fights uh, before he fought Coleman. Here we go, look at this. Look at the strength, the, the, the punching power also to the body. Now, Allen made an elemental mistake of crouching, getting back up, going on to all fours position. He should have stayed in the guard. Because here, here the knee comes. Here the knee comes. Right. And he's all, now he's out. Now he's out. This is our only expert piece. Oh my God, that's dangerous. Referee He's side. out right here. He's out, completely out. And I'd like to see where he goes through the tackle here. Now he's going to grab his leg. Oh, they don't show it. Yeah, there it is. And I think it was that, that this knee right here, that's the one that did it. Because he fall on the side. It's a lot like what happened when uh, Igor Bochanson KO'd Kerr uh, and got a no contest because at that time, these knees were not legal. Wow. Well, in combat sports, you can either be the hammer or the nail. And when Mark Coleman is the one swinging the hammer, you most definitely don't want to be the nail. Alon Go has found that out firsthand. Hey, everybody, it's TJ DeSantis. We are watching some of the best hits of one Mark the Hammer Coleman. And we're focusing on his pride run because it is Pride Never Die Month here on UFC Fight Pass. And when you look at what Coleman did in the UFC, he was already a Hall of Famer before getting to Japan and sort of revitalizing his career uh, in Pride's ring. That said, when you put in the Pride FC accomplishments and he goes from uh, a Hall of Famer to uh, indisputable Hall of Famer, you can't deny it. And, uh, you know, we go back to his UFC run 
He had a good rivalry that started back in 1996. He got a win over another man who sort of had a career resurgence in pride, uh, that being the Predator, Don Fry. Uh, Coleman got the win back at UFC 10, and now we fast forward to 2003, where Don Fry looks to avenge his loss to the Hammer. These guys definitely had a, a real rivalry. Yes, both Americans fighting in Japan, but on this night, and for the better part of seven years, uh, they didn't get along all that well. You know, competitive rivalry. It's going to make uh, two wrestlers at their core uh, turn into uh, maybe boxers. We all know that Don Fry likes to mix it up. We saw what he did uh, against Takayama back in the day. Well, trust me, he wants to hit Mark Coleman repeatedly in the face at Pride 26. Bad to the bone. Uh, this is going to be our last fight here on the Hammer's Greatest Hits. Appreciate you joining us. Again, it is Pride Never Die Month on UFC Fight Pass. Head over and jump into the vault that is the entire Pride Library. Uh, again, one of the most influential brands in mixed martial arts. Uh, please check it out. Let me know what you liked about this and maybe what you want to dive into next time. I'm on social media everywhere at TJ DeSantis. Uh, reach out to me. Let me know. All right. One last stop here. As we swing the hammer one more time, it is Mark the Hammer Coleman and Don the Predator Fry. Pride Never Die Month, right here on UFC Fight Pass. When Don Fry lost to Mark Coleman back in 1996 in the UFC, he lost more than just a fight. When these two throw down, Don knows it'll be completely different this time. When I first lost to Mark Coleman, uh, I watched that fight every day for a year. It, it completely consumed me. He sent me to the hospital to the ER. Um, I was embarrassed, completely embarrassed. I, I go for the knockout, I go for the submission. I just settle for the win. That's my goal, is to knock him out or submit him. And I just, and the, the, the win is secondary. Mark Coleman loves the fight game. And in 1996, he took it to Don Fry, and he's looking to do it again. And there's no love lost between these two. Coleman may have been away for a while, but he's ready for this highly anticipated rematch with Fry. I, I don't know what he's going to say now, but he didn't like me at all. And back in 96, I didn't particularly like him. Come fight night, I'll be ready to go. It's been a long journey. I haven't fought in a long time. You know, I, I'm itching to get back in there and get back to the top top of the rankings. I don't want to just get back in there. I think uh, with, with, with the proper coaching, and the proper training, I still, I got still plenty of fights left in me. I expect to ground and pound down for I to a victory. Possibly even submit the guy, I don't know. Maybe I've added a few tricks to my bag and maybe he has too, but I, I still vision a, a similar fight as the last one. When I get in the ring with Don Fry this time, you know, it doesn't matter if he likes me or I like him. It doesn't matter one bit. We're both got the same goal in mind. That's to win that fight no matter what it takes. You better have done your homework once the bell rings. Coleman looks ready. Fly <laughs> looks ready. If you fans can pick this fight, you're better than we are, because we can. No. But, well, we're going to find out when the fight happens. So. Let's go to the fight. Yeah. Hey, you know what, Stephen? Cheers. Cheers. It's unreal. It's a rock star coming to the ring. 
Look at the security he needs. Yeah, because he's hugely popular here in Japan. And he's got that certain stare, that sideways stare. And when he does that in the ring, people go ballistic. Yeah. <laughs> they showed on the big banner just a few seconds ago you saw it. Look at him. All serious. Don Fry is one of those kind of guys who can talk trash from the heart and still retain a little bit of dignity when he does it. He's a quote a minute. I've always loved this guy from the minute I saw him in 1996. I judged his first mixed martial art event, and man, he's still here, he's still relevant, and he's coming back for payback. Yeah, I always see Don Fry as, uh, now I love America, you know that, and I see him as, he is the American symbol, this yeah. guy. He is, he's leaving, living, breathing, eating everything. He's a pure American guy. Yeah, look at the trucks. And there you go. He's got the good old U.S. name flag on his trunks. Yeah! Stars and stripes and Don the Predator Fry in the ring. And his adversary. He won the Pride Grand Prix 2000. Mark the Hammer Coleman. These two warriors are not strangers, and this is a rematch, and we have been waiting for this rematch for a long time. This is it. This could be the fight of the decade. I mean, um, <laughs> there's no words, no nothing. Look at this. He needs the same amount of security as Don needed. Um, I, I, I cannot expect this fight to be boring. Well, Coleman knows that this is a lot of pressure on him to come back in after a year and a half layoff and face that man there, Don the Predator Fry. This is a crazy main event for you folks there in the English speaking universe. Fry Fighting Championship's bad to the bone, and both these men are bad to the bone. You've got the charging rhinoceros and <laughs> Mark the Hammer Coleman, and the wild dog in Don the Predator Fry. Both these gentlemen are stubborn. Both of these guys are mean. They're ornery, and they're gonna be straight at each other when that bell rings. Yep, I, I'm sitting here, and I, I, I told the people behind, before the whole event started, I, I, I said, listen, I'm nervous. They said, nervous? I said, no, not for the commentating, but for the fight that we're going to about to see tonight. Nervous, and I'm really nervous for this one. Don the Predator Fry with his quarterman Frank Shamrock looking on. Mark Coleman surrounded by strength personified in Gary Big Daddy Goodrich and Tom Erickson and Brandon Lee Hinkle. Oh, oh, there look is, at this folks. stare down. Don Fry never had a boring stare down. <laughs> no. And Mark Coleman. Look at the referee. <laughs> has always been the strong man in his fights. Uh, this is going to be two iron warriors meeting face to face, fist to fist, tackle to tackle. Whoa, Steven. This is going to be it. What do you think? He's going to shoot right in? Mark? I don't know, but here we are. Yokohama Arena Pride Fighting Championships Bad to the Bone. The main event. Fry versus Coleman. No. I think uh, Fry wants this to be a boxing match. Whoa. And Coleman wants to take it down, although there's a left hook lead by Coleman. Coleman ducking under, Fry working for the front face lock. Does he have the guillotine? No, I don't think he's under. Nice knee to the head. That's a good thing to do right here. Get a good takedown defense right from the bat. 
He's got to stay away. Coleman is very fast, phenomenal wrestler. You make one mistake, he's going to put you on your back. Fry has waited seven years for this match. And now it is unfolding before us. What blessed we are. Oh, yes. And uh, Fry's corner yelling right knee, which would seem to be the right weapon to throw right now. And he should make it flash. You go in and pull it out as fast as you can. Well, Mr. Root, you were saying that this was probably going to look a lot like uh, Ken Shamrock versus Don Fry. Whoa. And Fry with a beautiful tackle defense. Knee to the head, which is always good to the head because you cannot grab the leg. You have to defend it, otherwise there's a possibility of going KO. Yes, and Mark Coleman is no stranger to the knee, but usually he's the one delivering them. <laughs> and now he's the one taking them. But we shall see early in the fight, Coleman wants to take this one to the mat, I'm sure. Over, under, they're clinched up, up, cry with his back, and you better believe that uh, Coleman's going to go down and try and pick up a leg. Ooh, good knees there. This is the second left knee that uh, Don is throwing and had an impact. And again, knee to the body. That's the liver right there, which could hurt you a lot. Nice, he's turning away from the corner. Have you seen any change in Don Fry so far uh, because of his training with Frank Shamrock? Um, no, we couldn't, we couldn't have seen it yet. He, um, I think cautiousness. He didn't go in right away and go straight forward. I think uh, for sure that Frank told him, do not go in and, uh, and start hitting because Coleman's going to take you down. So I think he, that, but um, for the rest, we, and knees, he's throwing some good knees right here. This is a high stakes affair because Coleman wants to jump into the top 10 title picture and Fry uh, also is probably look, taking a look at that title too. But more importantly, this is about pride. And here we are, pride fighting championships. Hey, it's coincidence. It's like, it's, it's a screenplay. Fry said he's feeling younger. As a matter of fact, he said he's found, found the fountain of youth. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I like that, it's a, it's a good breakup. Um, and a restart standing. And I'm sure that Fry, who traditionally used to be a southpaw, now he's fighting orthodox. Oh, he made the left hook right there. Coleman seems very relaxed here. Yep, he does. This is the most relaxed I've seen Coleman in a long time. Oh, he's got that left hand lead. Oh, and he shoots and he gets the takedown. Coleman on top. And this is where Coleman won the uh, first fight that they had from this position. Yep, and now I think that uh, we're going to see a different fight. Uh, the, I hope that we're going to see Don fight different than normally because he's going to listen to Frank, which is a very good, in, yeah, a very good teacher, of course. And I think he's going to keep this guard nice and tightly closed. We had the opportunity to spend a lot of quality time with uh, Fry's trainer, Frank Shamrock, didn't we? Yes, it was it was perfect. Uh, we had a, a good talk. All the people know all the things <laughs> between me and Frank. Huh? Yes, yeah, you know, but, uh, I, I'm friends with both of you guys, obviously. But you know, you, you guys kind of like had the peace pipe happening. I mean, it was it was a great situation. Yes, I was. Uh, I'm I'm very about the whole situation. Um, go, going back to the fight, Don has his guard open, which is a thing that I don't advise. He should close the guard and. Because, Mark because Coleman's going to try and get side, Coleman's going to probably, probably pass the guard to get side mount and try to get north south and Let finish him with knees to yes. the top of the head, the way he finished both chance in uh, May 2000. Yep. Yeah. And Coleman blasting away, but Coleman is being more economical with his energy here. Uh, one of the things Coleman used to do was come out in such a flurry he would sometimes tire himself out, but he's uh, metting out his punches uh, extremely wisely here. Yep, and uh, there's some good, great power behind it. Maybe you think, oh, it's not that hard, but the shots to the body, they're going to take their toll at the end. Later in the fight, nice there, right, right hand, right hook to the body, and a right yeah, hook straight to the head, which I always advise everybody to do. But Throw. Coleman's starting to sneak through with that left hand, but nothing of 
real, real consistent damage. No. Yeah, I, good, good call. Yeah, but just uh, stop, don't move. It's wait, another it, restart. Oh, it's a stop, don't move? Yeah, one of our favorites. Yes. <laughs> you see, but because they move. Yeah, they do move. Whoa. And there we go again. Um, yeah, okay, the game plan. Again, Mark, Mark should go to the side. This is what Mark should do. Yes, and, he, and he's got, he almost has a complete side mount because he probably wants to work for either the key lock, the knees to the head, or even the side choke, jumping oh, over. Uh-oh, oh, mount, and, and now Fry gets out. Fry's got the leg. leg. Now, now, this is gonna be uh, a wear and tear position for anyone who's uh, had any kind of knee surgery, and we know that Coleman has. And that was, was that Coleman's knee or Fry's head that hit the yes. ground? Yes. <laughs> it might have been his head. Whoa. Elbows to the back, punches. Okay, now uh, Fry's gonna try and pull that left leg toward him and that was gonna create a bit of a pinch and it could put Coleman on his back. And there Coleman is going for, not a toe hold, but, well, is, is a toe hold, uh, should we call that the uh, gluteus maximus toe hold? Hey, listen, he could make one. If he pulls with his left hand on the toes and with the right he's pushing the heel, he could make a toe hold. Look at this, and Look Coleman this. pulls Fry over almost on top of him. Coleman on top again against the ropes. Probably gonna restart him again in the center in the same position. That was a good shot there and there. Yes. We've seen that punches from the bottom can be devastating. Mirko Krokop demonstrated that against Sakuraba in the Shockwave show last year. Still, um, Don Fry needs to close his guard, I think. But uh, Mark hasn't been trying to pass. Not one time, so, so yeah, maybe he doesn't need to. Well, Coleman snuck in two right hands to the head and then one to the body before Yuji Shimada, the referee, has uh, restarted them in the center in the same position on the ground. In the back of both fighters' minds, you know that they're thinking about their gas tank. Yes. They are thinking about the stamina element because both guys are strong and both guys uh, know that this could go into the third round. They don't want to rush out there, blow all their energy, and then be a sitting duck for the other guy. Yeah, but I think from this, right now, as we've seen for the last one and a half minutes, I think we should need a restart on the feet because there's not real significant damage has been done here. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think Coleman, more than Fry, obviously wants it to stay in this position. Yeah. So he's going to try and stay busier. Whereas Fry probably needs to try and lock up the hands. And uh, do you think that Fry could uh, sweep him from here? Yeah, he could try. You can always try. Uh, you can, uh, if you don't uh, try, it's like, yeah. I come again with my saying, if you don't shoot, you always miss. So yeah. might as well try it. And, uh, but if you want to, and you really want to explode, I would do it like the last minute. If they give the sign, one minute uh, left, then just explode and go for everything you have. I'm betting that this fight will not end in a submission. No, I don't think so either. But I'm not going to bet. One minute, I, I, what do you think, is uh, Yuji uh, going to restart him? And no, I think he's going to let him sit for one minute. He, he's not going to restart him with only one minute left. But I think that they're going to have some different game plans to talk about in their corner. Yep. Whoa, nice shots to the body. He's setting it up for a right hook to the hat. Yeah, I think right now Don thinks, you know what, let's wait 30 seconds more and then um, go to round number two. There you go, 30 seconds more. Neither man has done that much damage, but Coleman has been the more aggressive with the punches. And uh, he's had Fry where he wanted him. It looked like Fry was going to be able to uh, stop the takedown, but right when we thought he wasn't, he ended up on his back. Elbow, elbow, elbow to the 
Yeah, round two and round three, this is go that, those are going to be the rounds where something really is going to happen, I think. Yeah, I, I, I think both guys, I mean, if there be such a thing in the Pride Fighting Championships as a feel-out round, that was the one. Pride Fighting Championship fights are fought under the potential of three rounds. First round is the endurance round of 10 minutes, and the subsequent second and third round are of five minutes each. Uh, if the fight goes to distance, it would be a 20-minute fight, and it would go to the judges. There are no draws in the fight with the Pride Fighting Championships. And that first round, that's uh, Don Fry's lovely wife, Molly. Uh, it, she's drinking a lot of water because it's kind of warm in here in the Real Calm Arena. Oh, shit. I mean, I'm sweating. And here's that left hook lead by Coleman. And he ducks under. Fry sprawls and goes through the front face lock. And uh, here we have uh, Mark trying for that clinch. Yep, because. Um Don Fry caught a little headbutt there by accident, accidentally thrown. So not on purpose. And here we have Coleman blasting away with that right hand to Fry, who's on the bottom, with a guard around Coleman's waist. I think that uh, one of the elements that Don Fry may have worked on with Frank Shamrock is his cardio and his ability to stay relaxed. What do you think, boss? I still think exactly the same because we know that Frank is uh, one of the, there you have him with the cap, baseball cap, one of the most well-conditioned athletes, fighters in the game. And um, that's gonna be a major factor later in the fight. If Coleman's gonna get tired, he might run into a little problem. Yeah, Frank is one of those guys that came in uh, to mixed martial arts as a submission guy, but then improved his stand-up. Uh, with Don Fry, I think that what Frank is uh, teaching, Don Fry was fighting down lower yep. when they first started. I think he got that from Frank. Because he was he was thinking, you know, Coleman's gonna shoot at the legs. So hopefully the, the training from Frank Shamrock will pay off in this one. Because uh, no secret here what Coleman wants. As he would always say, ground and pound, baby. And yep. he's the man who invented the style. He is the man that even Fedor gave his ground and pound to Mark Holman. He told everybody that it was because of Mark Holman that he did the ground and pound so good. Fry said that they trained. I mean, Frank put him through the mill two to three times a day. Training. I believe it. And Coleman shooting. It's a sh it's a slow shot. Um, an easy oh, block, and there's a little bit. Of, he's underneath. Yeah, he is underneath the jaw. Okay, but Coleman is going down low, and Coleman's going to get the double, or is he going to get choked out? Oh, nope. Coleman gets the takedown inside mount. Bad position for Fry yep. momentarily. Uh, Fry has got Coleman's right leg underhooked on the ground, but he wants to basically uh, get his left elbow in front of that uh, right knee, otherwise he's gonna start getting knee in the side of the head. Uh oh north-south position. Yeah. This is a terrible position for Fry to be in because if Coleman can underhook both arms under Don's arms and that stay in north-south, he can end the fight. Yeah, but look at this, the knees to the head. From Fry on the bottom. Okay, we're gonna restart and good. And Fry, uh, Fry gets the regroup. It's a stop, don't move. Yes, yes. And, uh, I'll tell you what, Coleman has to be happy with the way that this round is unfolding. Now let's see what he's going to do. It's, I, I <laughs> okay, uh, Fry has to get out of this position. Yes, he, he cannot stay in this position. Coleman is way too dangerous. Okay, now uh, Fry escaping from north-south. Now Coleman with side mount. Coleman with belly up. Um, can, uh, can Fry flip him? To the left, boss. I think it's very difficult, especially a high skilled um, wrestler like oh, Coleman. Th there's the Maurice Smith move, the smother move. Don Fry's right hand over the mouth and nose of Mark Coleman. And you can see the grimace on Coleman's face. Is he losing air here, boss? Y yeah, I, but the only thing he has to do is pull his head back. And uh, that, that's pretty much the escape. But he was looking for air. That's one thing for sure. The next time we. Uh, the next version of the Boston Big Books, let's do the, uh, the defense, the, the hold your breath move. <laughs> yeah. Underwater, you know. In round three. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, three minutes left in this second round. Mark the Hammer Coleman 
having his way with the takedowns and position. Don Fry working defensively here. Coleman working for the north-south and almost getting it. Uh, if, if that uh, left arm of Fry slips down, it's going to be a tough thing for Fry. Yep. Uh, here we go again. The left punch to the body from Coleman and the right knees to the head from Fry. But I think the key to success for Coleman is right now the knees to the head. Yeah. Climb up a little higher so you can create some space, distance, and then start raining knees. Okay, he's almost got the position, Mark does. And yeah. Fry, there's one. Uh oh. It's not a good position for Fry, as we said. And he can he can try and stop those, but they're still gonna have impact, even though he's got his arms out. This could be over, folks. This is shades of his fight with Bo Chanch, and totally, this is what Coleman wanted. Um, Don Fry should post both hands on uh, Coleman's hips and push himself away from him and try to turn out. You gotta throw your legs over his body. It's, a, it's, a, it's very difficult to explain, but there is a thing that you can do right now, and you have to do it fast. Instead of laying there and receiving the knees, it's better to take a few shots, but then escape. Should Coleman try and elevate his entire body high in the air the same way that uh, Kevin Kev Randleman did? Because I think he could end the fight with a couple knees like that. Yes, the skyscraper knee. Yeah. I think the skyscraper knee by Coleman would be the fight ender here. Although Don Fry is one stubborn guy. He's got one hard <laughs> yeah. head. I mean, the hardest head around is Kazuki Fujita. Don Fry's got to be second. He's got to be way up there. And But but the thing I'm, I'm the most afraid of then is a cut. Yes. Because knees, you know, and cuts. Although, Mark Coleman, we see he's wearing uh, those knee bands. So how we call them? Knee guards. Knee guards. And uh, they take away, obviously, the cutting effect. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, and there's a headbutt to the stomach, and Yuji Shimada <laughs> telling him, uh, can't do that. He should explode. Yes, um, there Don it is. Fry should explode, and Mark Coleman should explode. Both, they should explode, go for something. Should Don Fry even bother throwing his own knees from the bottom? No, he should try to escape this position. Wrap around his waist and explode as hard to the left or to the right as you can, so that um, Mark has to find balance, otherwise he's gonna be on his back. And the, but at least then he cannot throw the knees. We've seen Don Fry come back uh, yeah. from positions and fights and take beatings and come Ooh. back and stop people. Uh, Coleman is very, being very economical about conserving his energy, though. And yeah. that's one thing that is really impressing me here about him. Yes, and, and the way he sets his knees up, too. Um, he's giving a left knee, and then uh, when Fry blocks the left knee, he, he, uh, right away he attacks with a right knee. So he's, he's doing a good job. He's yes, doing a good yes, job. Yes, he is. And, as I said before, he's being very conservative with his output. Uh, I think Coleman is not in a in a real aggressive stance to just end this fight with a TKO. I think he, he will settle for a victory by decision. Because he knows Don Fry is the kind of guy that if you try and TKO him, he'll TKO you. Yeah, we saw what happened uh, in the last round with Ken Shamrock. Suddenly out of the blue, bang, that right hook was there right on the money. Here we go. Almost north-south position. And it's that uh, left arm of Fry that is preventing the north-south position. And Fry trying with his own knees from the body uh, to the head. And uh, here we are. Uh, Coleman in complete control. Yep. Pretty much this whole round dictated how and where this fight was fought. And using his trademark knees to the top of the head from north-south position. There's another one. There's a left and a right. And watch this, he's gonna block it and then he makes the other one. Let's see if they show that. Yeah, what, what Don needs to do right now, he, he, he has to go ballistic in round number three. And he's, got, he's got to keep it standing. He's yeah. got to do some damage standing though. He's got to make Coleman back up. He's got to, he's got to sting Coleman, try and knock Coleman out. Like the, he's got to do what he did, like we said, with Ken Shamrock. He's got to yep. go in and catch him on the button, put him on his back, and then maybe step back and make him get back up dizzy and try to stop him rather than fall on top of him, have him flip him over, you know what I mean? Yep, I know exactly what you mean. And and, and he has to do it because he's been waiting for this for seven years, so he's got to go. He's got to go, this is his life now. If Coleman's going to get him down and he's going to get the same control, Coleman's going to win this fight. Coleman said that uh, he probably will have some ring rust in this fight, but he said that he uh, heard me mention one time during a commentary 
that a fighter was losing the ring rust within the fight. And he said he's probably going to lose his ring rust after that first round, which is 10 minutes. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Okay, this is the final round of our main event. Don Fry on the left and Mark Coleman on the right. And can Mark Coleman take this fight to the ground again? And can he start raining those knees? Because if he rains those knees, it's dangerous. Those knees have a lot of impact, especially when you're on the top. Yeah, they can give you a real headache. Oh, yeah, I've been in the position. Uh, oh. They're locked up now, which is going to favor Coleman because he's going to pick those legs just yes, like and that. He's and, get the take and Fry cannot stop that. I don't think there's anybody in this business. Once Coleman grabs a double, they can stop him. No, I don't think so either. And now he's got the side mount. Uh, for Coleman, he should start raining knees to the body, like we saw Alistair doing. Oh, and he's doing it right now. You see, you set everything up. If you start raining knees to the body, the defense goes low, and then you go for the head. Um, Don's got to really explode him. Yeah, he does, because Boss, if it stays in this position, Don's going to lose this fight. Yes. Yep. Okay, we got four minutes left, and Coleman position. is mounted on top of Don Fry, and this is really a bad position because Coleman can do a number of things here. Yes, but Don Fry, if, okay, not anymore. When Mark stretches his leg out, don't to underhook the leg and get out. But he's going to waste a lot of energy trying. Yes, but hey, it's a big, it's a big back door. And um, I, I think I never, in, that's in training, of course, which is a total different thing. But if somebody does it, it's a, a big door. You, you escape for sure. But this is what Coleman wants. He wants to be on top. He wants to be in range to deliver punches. He's controlling his head. You see how he controls Don's head with his yes. forehead? Yeah. It's a perfect thing because if you control somebody's head, you control his whole upper body pretty much. Like, like this cross face all the time. It's a very annoying thing to do and very effective. He's going to go for the hammer lock, I thought. Or for the figure four, I call it. Yeah, but he shouldn't do it from the mount because he could flip easily. Yes. But he can, he can make it and then jump to the side mount. Right. Oh, oh he now he can choke? turn. Now he, no, he can turn him now. Right. Um, don't shoot a hook with his right foot leg. No, he should go to the okay, other side. He's going for the figure four behind the neck. Uh, or no, he's just he's just holding the arm down, and he's starting to crack on Don Fry's face in, with regularity. Don Fry looking busted up now, but he's not going to go. And Coleman trying for his smother move. Yeah, but I don't see that happen happening. Um, Yes, Don should explode now to the left or to the right. I don't know, boss. Is, is Don in trouble here? He's trying. He's trying to. Don may be in trouble, boss. That's why he should explode. If he explodes to the right, you know, that's, you this, create distance. This Coleman is trying for that squeeze that he's got patented. He's taking out Dan Severn with this different position, of course. But his mouth is not on his chest. It looks like it looks like the mouth of Don is not right on the chest. You see, he should explode. But Coleman. To the left. He should explode to the left. I don't know if he's got it. it, it for me, it doesn't look like he ha he's got it. But if he doesn't, and Coleman uses a lot of energy, but we're, it's getting near the end of the fight. Yeah, so it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, because Coleman just squeezing him is going to weaken him anyway. Fry needs to get either back on top. Oh, this is round and pound he should right here. And Coleman wants him face up. He doesn't want to try and choke him out. Coleman uh, has never uh, rear naked choked anyone, so he wants to keep him face up, round and pound. I think Coleman wants to either TK him. Okay, it's getting busy here. Don should explode. He should buck up. Buck up with his hips. Absolutely. And Absolutely. And Coleman has to look for balance so he can't punch. It's like a rodeo. Rodeo. Yes. Move, move. He's got to move. He's got to underhook the leg now. Coleman scoring again and again. Don Fry finally fires back, but it's very hard to get power. One minute left in the fight. Coleman in total control here, mounted on top of Don Fry. Don Fry may need a miracle to pull this one out. Yep. He needs it for sure. He needs a stand up and then a, a, a knockout shot because otherwise he's going to lose the fight. Yeah, it doesn't appear it's going to happen, folks. Cook him, cook him, cook him, man. Cook him. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Give him the oven, give him the oven. Coleman in control, staying busy. 30 seconds left. The rematch has turned into a Mark Coleman ground and pound clinic so far. Yep. Coleman staying on top. Year and a half layoff, come back. 
facing the eternal tough guy and Don the Predator Fry, and it looks to us like he has got it. We're edging towards 10 seconds now. And there it is, folks. The end of the match. It appears obvious that yep. Mark the Hammer Coleman will now go 2-0 against the Predator. Yep, and uh, yep, I'm the it's the same thing here. He did it, he did what he had to do. Take him down, get the control, and here we go. Let's see what's going on. That was a smart move to do. This Mark. was just a situation where Fry just didn't have what it took to get Mark Coleman off of him. That's a, that's a bottom line. Coleman even tried that submission there, but it wasn't really a submission, as, as you said. Yeah. If you don't have the face in your chest, you can't make the guy tap. No, that's not gonna work. He should buck here. He should buck and buck and explode up. So he's gotta find his balance. Um, yeah, that's well, it. Well, in a way, I think Mark Coleman uh, really needed this fight maybe more than Don Fry because Don Fry, win or lose, could probably still retain his popularity here in Japan. Whereas Mark Coleman, he hadn't fought in a long time, and in a popularity contest, it's probably Fry that wins the votes, but Coleman's gonna win this fight. Yes. Yep, and that was it. It was no surprise. As we predicted, boss. Mark the Hammer Coleman has pounded out a unanimous decision over his nemesis, the Predator, Don Fry. And it was a class of wills, it was a class of strategies, but you know, it went back to their old ways, in a way. Yes, it is. The only thing, there were no headbutts. Um, but yeah, Mark is a phenomenal wrestler. Once he has somebody down, you know, it's very difficult to reverse the situations. He's got this great arsenal of knees. He did just he did he did what he had to do. Yes, and now we got the questions. Is Mark the Hammer Coleman ready to take on Fedor Emelianenko, the Pride Heavyweight Champion? Is Coleman ready for some of the other tough guys in the division? Marco Prokop lurks out there. He Aaron, we've got a whole bunch of things. We've seen Quentin Jackson, and we've got a tournament coming up, folks. The the total elimination 2003. August 10th. And who's going to be in that one, El Wapo? There are going to be a lot of people in one. One thing we know for sure, there's going to be Quentin Jackson. We've got Vandalay Silva. We have Sakuraba. And I think, yeah, maybe Dan Henderson needs to be in. Huh? But we don't know short for that one. So these three people are going to be in it for sure. And this was an outstanding show. The Pride Fighting Championships, bad to the bone. I'm Stephen Quadros. I am the fight professor alongside our broadcast partner, Boss Rutten. And there's Don Fry uh, getting out of the ring. Mark Sorry. the Hammer Coleman. It was more of one of mine. Let's listen More to the exciting fight. But it's been a long time. I've had a lot of injuries. I told you I would come back. I'm halfway back. I will continue to improve and become the dominant fighter I once was. I promise. Yes, we can talk over this because we took this. Okay, there he said it. Mark Coleman said he will continue to improve, but he's only halfway back. But he will become the dominant fighter that he once was. And I, and I believe it because everybody, when everybody gave up on him before the Grand Prix, you remember two years ago, he came back and he came back with a bang. So this is the kind of person that really can do it. Very happy to get this win. Okay, he's paying respect there to his competitor, Don Fry. There's really no bad blood between these guys. It's just a no. competition. I will continue to work hard. I promise. I will get that go back. Oh, well, it, Quentin Jackson doesn't have uh, a market only on cursing. Mark the Hammer Coleman keeps it real with <laughs> us, and he says he's zeroing in on that Pride Fighting Championship belt. I know it's going to take one hell of a lot of work, but I'm going to do it. I promise I'm going to do it. Mark the Hammer Coleman is back. Who's next for him? I don't know. Um, I, I can't tell. I, I, I don't know anybody right now who we can face. we got such a great heavyweights in the fight, fighting championships. Uh, pretty much everybody is good. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? 
Well, I don't know what I think, but I know Fedor's still the champion. Yeah. And I do know that we have that tournament. Total Elimination 2003. It's going to be the ultimate middleweight tournament. Who's going to be in that one, boss? Okay, now let me see. Um, I think Sakuraba is uh -huh. going to be in it. <laughs> yes. And then we got Vandalay Silva. And let's not forget Quinton Rampage Jackson. And that is a match that I'm really looking forward to. So with a little luck, ladies and gentlemen, and maybe I shouldn't say that, but I really just want to see those two guys fight. This has been an outstanding show. Pride Fighting Championships, bad to the bone, comes to an end. I am Stephen Quadros. I am the Fight Professor. Alongside my broadcast partner, his name is El Wapo. He is Boss Rutten. We're wishing you a very, very good night. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on August 10th for the Total Elimination 2003. Backstage with Mark Coleman. Congratulations, oh, Mark. Thank you, Mel. How, how you feel, man? Oh, I'm relieved. I'm so happy. Let's, let's get you back to the, to the locker room. It's been a long, long time. Right. I just needed to get a win. Now get back to training, get better shape. I'm going to get that damn belt back. Now, now you got the win. Um, was it as decisive a win as you wanted it to be? <coughs> but to be honest with you, yes, it was, because, uh, you know, Don Fry is one hell of a tough customer. Right. And uh, like I said, it's been a long time. I've been battling a lot of injuries, uh, some personal issues. Uh, I just needed to get in there, get, get some rust off me, and, and get a win. That's what I did. I would like to have done better, but that's all I had today. You got the win. Next time, if it looks like that, I won't be pleased. Next time, it will be more decisive. How tough and how different when, was Don Fry's game this time? You know, he's just tough. You know, he was tough the first time. Uh, he was real tough the first time. He just had the headbutts going for me the first time. He didn't have much of a chance tonight. Uh, you know, I just think, uh, you know, I just think the better fighter won. Right. Do you think uh, Frank Shamrock helped him at all in his ground game? Because he trained a lot with Frank Shamrock to work against, you know, the uh, ground game. Well, I don't know. You know, I felt like I controlled the whole fight. I felt like I dominated the whole fight. I just uh, had to be a little bit cautious. I just really needed to get a win bad. So, you know, I didn't take a whole lot of chances. Um, you know, I'm sure maybe the fans aren't as pleased as they, they would like to be with me, but, you know, they have to understand a year and nine months off, that's a long time, and I'm getting up there in age. But, uh, you know, at the next fight, I'm going to promise to be nonstop action, go for the kill more. But this time, I just really need to get a win. You said some good things about Don Fry in the ring after, after your victory. It, it, is that feud over with now? I mean, you've beaten him twice. Do you think it's over? I never had a problem with Don Fry. You know, he's a he's a really good guy, really nice guy. I really didn't want to fight him tonight. Uh, that was maybe more for him than for me. Uh, I don't have a problem with any of these fighters. All, all of us work hard. Uh, we're all in this together, trying to trying to become mainstream and just just make a living. He's a good guy. I wish him well. Uh, he's he, he's one of my favorite fighters, to be honest with you. Is Mark Coleman back? I'm I'm back. I just. Uh, I needed that for a little bit of my confidence. Now I'm going to really turn up the training. And when I'm in good <coughs> shape, I was in decent shape tonight. But when I'm in my best shape, I don't think anybody can stop me. Who, who are you looking for next? Who's next for Mark Coleman? I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm ready for it. I'll be ready for anybody.